All right, so um, for MS5, the very first thing you need to do uh, is to bring the, PO, the milestone one files in here. Okay, so the error, now all the things that you have, bring the latest versions into MS5, okay? And compile and make sure everything compiles and works properly before you continue. So everything in MS4 plus POS app that you did in, in the first one. Now, how does the submission of milestone five work? So it's not MS5 that you're submitting, it's MS5. One, one means menu option one. Two means menu option two. So five menu options, you have five submissions. And each of them will gain 12%. For your project to uh, be markable, which means I can mark it, I, I would actually mark it and it's, and it's not considered incomplete, is for you to submit the first four milestones, late or not late, it doesn't matter, uh, submit the first four, and at least one of these, so at least one of the menu options to work. But because menu option one loads and saves the data, you need it to do other stuff. So one is your only option if you only want to do that and get your 52% and be done with it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's that. Uh, and because your POS uh, app mockup is functional, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to make the first one. It, when I say functional, it means it's, it compiles and runs as a mockup. I'm going to tell you how to, uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you develop this and that, so only option one will work. And then when you're done, only option two will work, and three, and you keep going like that. So, um, every single submission of MS5 has a reflection attached to it, okay? If you are reflecting about the entire project, or subject, or you want to mention something about the entire thing, do it only in one of them. Hopefully, it's going to be the last one, whichever is the last one that you're submitting, okay? But if you are citing, but you have to have citation, right? Each citation is for that part that you're submitting, okay? So if you have something general, don't copy to all of them. Because I will be confused because every time I'm reading, I'm going to read it. Oh, this is exactly like the other one, exactly like the other one. So if, you're, if, you, if in your first reflection, if, it's, if in your first reflection in the 5.1, you mentioned whatever you wanted to mention and uh, you don't have anything else to say, the second one, the reflection is only a citation Say I did everything by myself. I did everything by myself, so you're going to ha have the other ones like that. Okay? So what, um, don't repeat uh, what I'm saying. Uh, uh, don't repeat text in it. If something is common, only put it in one of them. <clears throat> so implementation. I created the class called Bill, um, and I, it, it was already getting too big, so I gave you the code for that. It's a very simple class. Uh, it's a collection of uh, item pointers, uh, and what happens is that it's, it literally holds the, uh, the items you have, okay? It holds, the, it holds the items you sell. So it kind of holds where, uh, which, which items you have sold, and then it prints them one by one when the build is getting printed, and then you can clear it. So it's a collection of items. Uh, so when you are writing milestone 5.5 and you're implementing POS, when an item SKU is scanned and you search it and you want to sell it, you simply add it to the build. And when everything is done, you say bill print, and you're printed, okay? So bill has these things. It has an attributes, uh, sorry. So yeah, uh, to take a look at the bill, and I'll show it to you. So this is essentially what bill is. And I put detailed, uh, detailed comment for every single function that it has. So clear, so after the sale is complete, you clear it so it's ready for the next sale. Uh, add, adds an item to it. Uh, total shows what is the current total of the bill, whatever the, the total no, uh, amount of the bill is currently. 
and print, prints everything up and prints the total. Okay? If you want to modify them, for example, have the clear, call, did I call the clear in the print? Because I just noticed it's a good idea when you print it to clear the, the, the bill too. Let me see. So that's bill.cpp. No, I didn't clear it. So maybe it's a good idea to, to clear the bill over here <laughs> because when you print, print it, you don't need it anymore, right? So I, shouldn't have, I should have done that. I didn't do it. But anyways, you can change the code for it if you want to. It doesn't, it, it, I wrote it, but you can change it. It's one of the parts, parts that you're at and, and give it to me. So. so that's the bill. Now, to start the POS app, you have to add a few attributes to it. Attribute number one is a data file name. It needs to know what is the name of the file to open and load and save and stuff in it. So data file name is a C string, maximum 128 characters. Then you have an item pointers array, which is essentially an array of pointers, which uh, it's an array of pointers in which you're going to hold perishable and non-perishable items. So each item pointer will either point to a perishable or a non-perishable. Okay, so I'm saying an array of item pointers with size of max number of items uh, set to 200 in POS.h, modified if it's not 200. So that's that. So I'm going to call this array IPTR throughout the whole thing because I didn't want to keep saying uh, item pointers or item pointers array. So IPTR, I call it IPTR. Then you need an integer of a kind to hold how many of these pointers you have used. So if your data file has 20 items in it, out of this 200, only 20 of them are pointing to actual items. The rest are garbage. So your, uh, your uh, number of items should be 20 in that case, which means the, the last thing that you're using is uh, 19, right? Zero to 19. So, and I call that one NPTR. So when I say NPTR, I mean the number of pointers. Where is it? So we call this number NPTR from now on. So NPTR is not a pointer. It's number of pointers that you are using, number of used pointers in the area. The action title. So whenever I say print an action title, whatever the title is, first you're going to print for greater than sign and a space. Then you print whatever the title is in 73 spaces left just by filled with dots. So they all look the same. I would write a function for that. Your choice. And MS51, the very first thing that you need to implement, requires you, you to uh, implement the uh, mockup function you had load records, or if you didn't have, create one. OK? So what load records do uh, does is very simple. It first prints the action title loading items, then, then opens the data file name that you have that is built in a constructor, and the constructor is being set. Um, you uh, print the action, to, uh, print the action, and then open that file in an IF stream object. And uh, if it is successful, it means the file actually exists. If the function is, uh, if the, if the, what should we call it? I didn't actually test that in the tester. Maybe I should add that one. Anyways, so if the uh, document doesn't exist, it means this is the first time POS is being called. It needs to create the data file. To do that, uh, just uh, uh, so if it, if it fails, you just reopen it with an OF stream and close it immediately. So that j creates an empty file, and you get out. So your whole entire thing is empty, and there is nothing in the, in the POS system. But if it is open successfully, it means you now you have to load the items one by one. Now, to load the items one by one, what you need to do is while this data file thingy is in a good state, the object you created, you read one character from the, from the file 
and you ignore another. The first character you are reading dictates to you what type of object you are creating. So if the single character you read is a P, then you are going to instantiate a perishable item and hold it in the, uh, in the next available item pointer or a temporary item pointer. And if it is N, then you instantiate a non-perishable and hold it in a temporary item pointer. After this, when everything is done and your, your uh, dynamic memory is allocated uh, and your object is created, you extract that item, whatever is created, from the data file. And because everything is created virtually, automatically the proper thing will be read. So if what you read is perishable, a perishable record will be read. If it's non-perishable, a non-perishable record will be read. And you keep doing that until uh, uh, reading fails, which means you, read, you, you got to the end of data and you stop and you hopefully have set each one of the values you read to the next available uh, pointer in the array and you set your NPTR to the number that you have. So IPTR will hold all the items and NPTR holds how many you have. That's loading. Saving is much easier. You just write a loop starting from zero going up to NPTR, and one by one you write the items into the OF stream object you created out of the file. So you simply insert it and everything's automatic because each one knows how to write itself. The file will be written and created and you're done. You get out of it. That's it. So one loop, three, four lines of code. List items. So when the person selects the first option, it shows the list of I all items in a database. So first you print, so first of all you print the action title, then you sort all the items based on the name of the item. Okay? You don't know how to do sort, that link is to IPC 144 sort dinghy that you had last semester. Choose one of the algorithms over there and sort your records accordingly, okay? So you sort your, your records. After the records are sorted, uh, you print a header, then you loop through from zero up to NPTR, and first you print a row number, and right from SKU, you start printing them on O stream, and everything's gonna get printed. And at the end, and while you're doing that, while you're doing that, uh, Add the cost of the item one by one to a variable so you can have the total asset of your inventory to see how much everything is worth. So one by one you are going through them and print them. You add them to a double. At the end, you're going to print that and total asset and print that number out and you're done. Please don't hard code that number for me, okay? I'm going to change the, <laughs> that number is not right, okay? It's just the number. Actually, it's a good idea to actually change that. Uh, mm, let me just, I'll do it. Po give, give me a second. One more time. One more time. So when you're creating your list items, it's a good idea to pass a Boolean to your list items and have the last two lines of the list items to get either printed using that Boolean flag or not printed so you can reuse the function list items in next stages of the application. And the submission happens like this, so it's just a zero and one and nothing else. You enter it and and there we go. So how it happens. All the, exec all the mains are the same. They are not different ones. It's just how you enter it. So when it comes up, it resets all the data to the original values, okay? So when you see this, this shows what the, va what the data is before. As you see, it is not sorted, okay? Then it comes over here, and I'm gonna put over here one. Hit enter, so it shows everything. Okay, in sorted manner, and then I'm gonna put over here 
uh, zero and it gets out. And as you see, now everything is saved, sorted. So it shows that because it, it proves that the data is actually being sorted. So everything is sorted here. Now. OK, so that's one. You do this, and milestone one is submitted. Any questions about milestone, uh, milestone five one? Uh, any questions about five one? So that's the minimum requirements. But down to this point, now your project is markable. After this milestone two, add item. So what you do with add item is essentially uh, is that you um, let me just bring this up uh, to the for the code so I can actually explain. So with add item, first you print the uh, action title, whatever it is. Then you create a temporary pointer for the item and ask the user if item is perishable or not. If the user says it's perishable, you instantiate a perishable item in your pointer. If it's not, you instantiate a non-perishable item. And then after that, you extract the, the item from CN because it's ice stream, right? You extract it from C in, and uh, you make sure that C in is a good state and item is in a good state. If that's the case, uh, you're done. If not, you loop back up, okay? And you just print the item. And because item holds the error inside, if something goes wrong, it's going to actually show the error message, okay? So that's that one. And when everything is good and done, you set the uh, last av uh, next available uh, space in the items to the value you have and uh, to the va item you entered and you add one to your NPTR. Ob obviously, if the number is already to maximum, you're just going to say um, uh, 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 you print an if the inventory is full, you cannot add any more object, uh, options, but um, that's an obvious thing. So, um, to, to, um, to test that, the data entry for it is like this. So I'm adding this stuff like that for you so to see if everything uh, is done properly. So that's two and y and one, one, one. In here you can, oh, it doesn't matter, three ones. You're going to have to put four. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is that uh, you can copy and paste over here too. Orange, 3.99. Um, it's, uh, no, it's not taxed, 20, and you put the address, and done, and you enter the other one, and so the other one is uh, 222, um, so I'm going to put 2, and I'm going to say no, and it's going to be 222, and it's going to be T, 1222, yes, 10, and 0. And it shows that the two values are added at the end of the, so that before and after you see exactly what's added. Obviously, because you didn't display it before, it's not sorted. It just adds it at the end. And that's the add item. And let me just show you something, because uh, I just want you to see that the, in every single output in here, when I mention expected output at the top, I'm saying this output is only a sample for debugging purposes. The submission tester output may have different values, which is actually true. If I actually show you over here, uh, the submission, you will see that the submission is absolutely different in here. So if I... Uh, Okay, so if I actually submit it over here, 244, let's say, uh, project MS51, okay? As you see, let it compile. As you see, it's not going to, uh, 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 what shall we call it, show you all the things that you had at the beginning because I don't care. I am copying it for you, so I know what they are. So in here, you simply go list items and use zero and its matches and you submit it, okay? 
So it doesn't show you, uh, it shows the, out, uh, the outcome, but not the input file. Just be aware. OK? So uh, the other one, where am I? MS53 is, uh, 52 is to remove an, um, uh, we talked about 52, that was to add item, and 53 is to remove an item. To remove an item, you have to first select the item. And that's where it comes that I told you, have the list items with a Boolean up there. So in here, what you do, you first have to select the item. So what you do, you print the action, the item selection by, by so you create a function called select item. Select item, what it does, it selects an item and returns the row number back. Or you can return the index back, it's your choice. And if you return index back, then you have to, zero becomes a valid thing, so anyways. Row item is easier because if it returns zero, it means they didn't select anything. But, but anyways, your choice, whatever you want to do with select, it's your choice. Um, but yeah, so, so if you print the item selection by row number and you pause because it's a long thing, you want the user to know what's happening. Otherwise, they hit enter and everything's going to scroll up. They, don't, they won't see. So you pause and you say press enter to start. You press the enter and you're going to uh, uh, print the action title listing items, and then list the items, OK? So I would do call list the items with false so it doesn't show the asset. Um, so I'm going to say see hint below. Then prompt enter the row number. User enters the row number. But you have to put a foolproof thing, which means if it's 26 items, uh, 0 is not a, uh, a valid thing. Uh, 27 is not a valid thing. ABC is not a valid thing, so you have to get the valid value and return the integer so your remove item knows what to remove. And I'm saying it would be nice to have your list items better receive a Boolean argument to turn the total asset display on and off so you can reuse the function here. That makes your life easier. So as you see, this is how it's going to work out. You're going to uh, say it's going gonna, it's gonna to say that, and it's going to say play it. Press enter to start. Then it's going to list it. I put list over here. So it didn't want to be too much. That's not right, obviously. So it's only seven items. Then it's going to say row numbers. If it's ABC, it's wrong. Minus one is wrong. Eight is wrong. Five is wrong. And uh, 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 when five is hit, it's going to return five. So that's how item selection will work. Then how remove item will work is that it prints the action remove item, then calls select item and receive the row number. When the no number is received, it's going to say print, it's going to print removing. It shows the item that is about to be removed. It removes it from the, from the and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm going to explain how. It removes the item from the array, the allocate the item and everything, and print done. So this is how it's going to work out. So it's going to say removing, and it shows, for example, five blueberries. Blueberries are being removed. And after it's removed, it's going to say done at the end. OK? And this is how it's going to work. So this is how you're supposed to do it. Wow, it went very long. So say, please don't, yeah, it's play, uh, uh, never mind. So this is the, uh, the, the item array, right? And say I have eight arrays over here, and user selected four to remove. When user selects four, it's the index three that I have to remove. So I'm going to first deallocate item number three from the array. Then I'm going to shift everything to left. So kind of shift everything to that side to, to uh, kind of uh, uh, overwrite the value that is deleted. So my array will look like this afterwards. So as you see, everything shifts over there, and I reduce the MPTR by minus 1, it becomes 7, and it's updated, it's removed. And that's your remove item. Yes? So, yeah, so, so in this case, it's going to be, so it's NPTR3, right? So you're going to say delete NPTR3, 
and in a loop you start from you start from three and you say four to three, five to four, six to five, seven to seven to six, and you're done. And you don't need to make anything null schmall over there because your NPTR tells you how many of them are used. If this is moved, pointed to something we don't care because it's not going to be used, it is, uh, it is the number that dictates how many of them are used. Okay? And uh, that's the value. So you hit 3 and you hit enter ABC minus 1 just to make sure that everything you're doing right for the, for the um, uh, row numbers, and then you enter 5 and 0, and it ends. So essentially, um, I, I have this over here. Let me just do it over here. So this is how you do it. So if I go F sub uh, 5, 5, 3, it was right. 5, 3, it's going to ask. So you're going to say 3, hit enter, and then enter again. Then you go A, B, C. Then you go minus 1. Then you go 27. And you see it actually shows the values that are valid over there. You've already done that in your utils 50 times. So, uh, and then uh, row number 5. And it's going to say it's deleted. And if I go 0 over here, it shows that that blueberry thingy is removed from here. And I'm going to say yes. So I keep sub submitting things to myself for some reason now. Anyway, <clears throat> all right. So that's that. That's a uh, uh, removing item. Stock item is very simple. It works exactly like removing item. So you select the item. After you select the item, you add to the quantity. Done. OK? And you already overloaded the plus equal operator and everything that adds it. The only thing you need to kind of think about over here is that you have a maximum number of quantity. That is 99. So if you have 10 in here, then the valid values to receive for that integer is between 1 and uh, 79, right? Because 89 is the max. No, sorry, uh, 89. 89? 89. Yeah. OK, so that's the value that is supposed. So you have to calculate what are the uh, proper values and do a foolproof entry. It works the exact same way over here. You see that? So it shows uh, I'm, I'm, I'm selecting number one. So it's going to say selected item. It shows that it's Blueberry. Now in here it says, because Blueberry already has 30, it's going to say between 1 and 69. Put a value, and done. We are done. OK? And that was 5. Any question down to this point? And last but not least is the point of sale system. So the point of sale system, uh, how it works is that you, uh, it says that starting point of sale as the action, and then asks for an SKU. When you put the SKU, it shows the SKU, and it says add it to the bill. So this is literally what you do. When they enter the SKU, you have to write a search function over here. It's a very simple thing that you, uh, we, you already overloaded the, 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 the equal operator, the, the comparison operator, to check to see if the SKU is a match. So you get an SKU, make sure the SKU's length is proper and everything, and you go through a loop and check each item with the SKU. If it's a match, then uh, in that search, you return the address of it so you know where the item is. You display the item, and you add that value to the bill. You add that pointer to the bill. And you say add it to the bill. And total is this much. OK? And, add, and in here, first one was peaches. The second one is lay chips. But lay chips had only one, so now the quantity is 0. And each time you are doing that, you are reducing the quantity by 1. So if they actually try to do it again, it's going to say out of stock. And if they put an SKU that doesn't make sense, it's, it doesn't find, it's just going to say item not found. And that's the implementation for it. And it is essentially what it is, as I mentioned to you. There is nothing uh, extraordinary about it. So, so as I mentioned to Ankopoli, we, uh, we suggest 
the creation of a relatively simple method called search first. This method receives the SKU and returns the address of the item in the IPTR array if the matching SKU is found in the array or other files null PTR. So that gives you the hint if the SKU they entered is correct or not. And use get line uh, with a maximum number of SKU characters. So if they enter more than that, you can flush, uh, uh, flush it and tell them that the SKU is too long. They are not allowed to enter that big of a number. And that's it. Uh, so um, first you print the action. If SKU is not empty and the I stream is not in a failed state, you search for the item. If you find it, you add it to the bill and show the total of the bill. The bill is already giving you that. And uh, if the reduction was not successful, you, it means it's out of stock. And you simply show the item, and because it's out of stock, it automatically sets it to out of stock. So you show the item, and uh, you, say, uh, you, uh, you simply say out of stock. Uh, if the item is not found, you say not found. If iStream is in a failed state, it means they entered too many. So you print SKU too long, you clear the CN or iStream, and then you flush keyboard uh, and everything, and you go back up. If the SKU is empty, it means sale is complete. So if just hit at the beginning and the SKU is empty, there is nothing in it, you simply print the bill and you're out. And that's the end of the milestone five. I try to make it as simple as possible. And this is the data entry for it, and just to test it, this is how it works. So uh, I just did that two seconds ago. So but ho I hope it works. Um, <laughs> um, so five five and compile results yada 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 yada. So so it goes like this. There you go. So five uh, one 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 not found nine three one eight. That is a sale now. Quantity is zero. So nine three one eight again. It's gonna say out of stock. Uh, four two nine seven. That's another sale and four two. 9.7 again, out of stock, 12.12, 12. that's another one that is added. And if I just hit enter, it shows the bill and exit goes uh, out the program. And if you look at the values, you'll see the values are actually reduced by one and they're all sitting down. And that's the end of the point of sale system. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Use Valgrid. Take it, Valgrid. Take the way we show at the beginning how to compile it. Take it on the uh, on matrix and run it. It tells you backwards how it goes. So it says in main, then it goes in this, and right at the beginning goes where memory leak began to start. Then it gives you the line number. Go back to Visual Studio and fix it. Valgrind gives you a per <laughs> Visual Studio is very forgiving. That's why we want it to, to be multi-platform. So you see how easy it is to leak memory. And that's why the programs on Linux are so reliable and so, so nice. That, like you never see it crashes, but on Windows applications crash like that because the compiler is very forgiving. Okay, so use Valgrind. Valgrind shows you perfectly. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't print the error. You print the object because it, we said it in the previous milestones. When the object is printed, if object is in an error state, object is going to print, instead of the object, it's going to print the error. So all you need to do, you don't like, for example, when you are, uh, uh, when you are writing, when I say overwrite the right, I say first. No, where did I where did I mention that? Let me just let me bring one of those up so I can explain it. Yeah, for example, when you are getting the 
when you are getting the item, um, uh, the SKU to, to search for the item and, and reduce the value by one. So you, you find the item, and the item has nothing in it. You don't need to check to see if the quantity is low or not. You just reduce the quantity by one. Because we designed it in a way when the quantity goes below zero, it's going to set the error message. All you need to do is to reduce by one and print the item. If the action fails, printing the item will print the error message instead of the item, so everything's automatic. Okay? You know, that makes the designs like this many make your code small and clean. Other than otherwise, you had to, in every single thing, you had to write an if statement, print error message, and so on. So that makes your life easier. Anything else? Yes. Yes. So if any, anything that you think is being repeated in other re reflections, remove it. Because I look at the first reflection, second reflection, fourth, fourth, and fifth, and I go. So if, I, if you keep repeating the, the things that you have, then I'm going to go, what Cut the heck? Come on, I just read this. OK. So, and, and please, please do not write stories of your lives, OK? Uh, if you have, if you have uh, a comment, try to be short and sweet. You, should, you could be short and harsh too, it doesn't matter. But, but go be to the point. Don't worry, you're not going to hurt my feelings, okay? Uh, if you think something is wrong, just be blunt and tell me. This is, the re this is what's going on. This is my reason for it. And I appreciate every comment that you give. And I believe all my colleagues will do, that, do the same. Yes. Sure, no, that's very fine. Yeah. You, by default, at the comment at the top, you cite anyway. But the reflection helps us to go over there and check it out. Because if it gets flagged and I get it out, then it's too late. But if I at the, right at the end I saw that, see that this one is already there, then I'm not going to look at those flags. Okay? And you cite everything. If you cite the code that I wrote, you're not going to lose mark, but you're going to cite that this is the code Farlat gave us. Okay? No problem. You, but if you tell me, like, cite that this part of code, I got it from Jack, then you lose mark only for that part. And it's not much, trust me. Okay? And if you are getting it from other friends of yours, like chat, GPT, and stuff, uh, please mention it. Because if other people will ask, and it generates the same solution. So, <laughs> so it's not a good thing. All right? Um, if the code is identical to another code, it doesn't matter that uh, you don't know who got it from you. You're both at fault. If your codes are identical, it's fingerprints. It's like when the two codes are identical, it's identical. Um, it's, you cannot say, well, well, I don't know. Maybe I left my repository open for a day or something. I, you don't know. Or we both copied from the same place, but we were not aware of it. So you can't do that. Please don't do it, OK? <clears throat> Anything else? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can call one function in another right. if the logic is identical. Because everything is virtual, in iStream 2, the proper version will be called. Still, I... Yes, but one calls the other one. Uh, but one calls the other one. Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. No, I mean, but what, what do you mean by logic by IPC1? But like you're using a for loop? No, no. Like, uh, I have a function. Is it yours? Yes. Yeah, it's your, you're, you're citing yourself? Oh, I copied this from myself. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, you don't need to cite that. Okay, you don't need to cite that. Okay, let me just pause this thing because.